Hello everyone, in today's video I thought we'd do a little bit of Lua because we haven't done that in a little while and I figured, hey, why not? And I was uh, reading a bunch of recent articles about uh, integrated air defense systems and I said, I bet you I could come up with a really quick and easy way we can uh, simulate what happens when a sector control system gets knocked out, basically disrupting the IADs. So what I said is, well, how would you simulate that? Well, normally what you'd have is one sector control station that'd be linked to some kind of EW radar. If EW radar went down and sector control station went down, basically everybody else would flip on their radars so that they could kind of do things autonomously here. So I said, I think I could probably whip up a script for that, and let's see if we can. So we're sitting here in a lovely New England. Uh, this is uh, Martha's Vineyard. Apparently the Republic of Martha's Vineyard has decided to go ahead and uh, break off from the rest of the United States, and I'll put up some um, Russian air defenses, and they've sort them together a quick little sector control station that's basically going to be monitoring everything around it. Now one thing I'm going to do real fast is I just want to measure that's about 15 nautical miles. You'll see why. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a script so if the sector control station gets destroyed, it automatically sets all the SAM batteries under its control into autonomous mode. Now, if you want to make this even more effective, you could actually order all these items to actually be out of contact, which makes them even more powerful of a sort of situation that you can go ahead and create there. But again, that's a bit of an extension. So let's go ahead and set the sucker up. So we'll give ourselves our handy dandy Lua script console. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier. Hello. Well, that doesn't seem terribly easy to read. Hello, control plus, 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 plus. All right, looks good. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what unit got killed. So that's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is go ahead and uh, let's see here. We'll call it local unit equals send edit equals send edit. I believe the command is unit x. So what that will do is that'll go ahead and return what unit just got triggered on a trigger. So this will be the unit that died. So the first thing we need to do after that is we now need to say if... Uh, let's see here, if unit dot, uh, let's call this a uh, name. I will do, no, we'll make it even easier. We'll do string dot find unit dot name, comma, uh, let's call it control. So basically what we're saying with this line of code is, does the string that we used, that we detected of the unit that got killed, include the word control in it? Do. Then we'll come down here and say end. So if it does contain the world control, that simply means that one of our control stations has died. So what we'll do is we'll simply now go ahead and calculate a radius of everything around itself, and then we'll take a look at that unit is within that radius to automatically go autonomous. So it shouldn't be too bad. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go and get ourselves a little list of units. So the local units equals, let's see, VP get side... It will say side equals Republic of Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> That's funny. Dot units was going to give us all the units on that side. And now we just have to say uh, for, let's see, KV and I pairs. Man, I love this command. We'll call this units. Do. And then we'll come down here and say end. Let's clean up my text a little bit here because it's a little bit sloppy right now. Okay, so here's what we need to do. So we need to now look at every unit around us and see if it contains the word SAM. If it does, we'll flip it on to uh, radar mode. So we'll go ahead and type in if string.find. I love this command. V.name, comma. Let's just call it SAM. Again, we can get more technical if we need to. Oh, whoop, 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 whoops. There we go. Almost made that mistake. Almost, almost. Uh, then we'll go ahead and let's see here. Send edit. Let's call it set MCON. MCON will say unit mode, which is important. Uh, the GUID, and then we're going to say radar equals active. So that way it goes ahead and turns the radar system on. Let's see, I think that should do it for that end. Let's go ahead and check my logic here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, so here's the next problem we're going to have. If we run this now, it'll turn every single SAM site on in the island, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me. I mean, that's all kind of a handy little trick we could use. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and test that out real fast. Well, yeah, we'll be okay. I trust that it's going to work. So um, we're going to go ahead and expand this a little bit and get the range. So that way we don't only uh, determine if it's close enough. We also say, does it have enough range? So let's go ahead and check. Oop, I made a boo-boo. I'm pretty confident you're going to need a second parenthesis. So obviously we don't want to be measuring the range unless it contains the word SAM, just to save on uh, CPU cycles here. So we're going to come in here and say if, that's why I hate nested ifs. If, uh, let's see here, uh, what is it called? Uh, tool... Uh, what is it? Range, I think, is the one we need. Tool range, I believe, is the one. Let me go double check real quick. Tool underscore range. Yeah, that's the one. Perfect. If tool underscore range, uh, we're going to go ahead and say v.guid, comma, unit.guid. Now, here's where we're going to get ourselves in a lot of trouble. 
if you recall, the unit that triggered all of this is a unit that was destroyed. That means that because this unit was actually obliterated, its position no longer exists in the world. So if we tried to get the distance between it and where it got blown up, uh, we're not going to be able to identify that information with the unit GUID information anymore. Instead, what we're going to have to do is actually extract that information from it. So I'm actually going to come up here and say uh, unit equals unit uh, send edit get units and we're going to go ahead and say side equals uh, republic of martha's vineyard and we're going to say guid equals unit .guid. so that way we can extract the position of that particular unit so it'll give us the entire unit string not just just little pieces this should give us a little bit more ammunition to work with real quickly here so i like that i like that all right so that's all set let's come down here and say i uh, have tool.range.guid uh, let's see here is uh, let's see range is in nautical miles is less than 20 why not then turn on the radars i knew this was going to get complicated i knew it i knew it i knew it make sure we include our little end statement here all right let's check my logic so the unit gets blown up we record the name of that unit into this unit variable then we say get me the details about that unit remember this unit no longer exists but we can still get the details about it so then we've got the unit so then we're going to say if we find uh, that unit that got destroyed had the word control in it, then we're assuming it's a sector control station. Then we're going to get a list of all the units on that side. Then we're going to create a quick little for loop that says, give me each item inside of that side's units. And then we're going to say, if the string includes V name, which remember is just the unit we're checking, includes the word SAM, then it must be a SAM. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, if tool range between the classic position where the sector control station is and that particular SAM that we picked up is less than 20 miles, then we're automatically going to set that to be radar active mode. Whoa, okay, so that's uh, that's uh, quite a handful there. So let's go ahead and clean this up real quick. I'm gonna go Control C, go ahead and close this sucker. We're gonna go up and now go ahead and set up the events for this one, events. We're gonna go ahead and have to create ourselves a new event here. SAM sector activates, and we're gonna call that because that seems to be pretty steep. We're gonna say it's a repeatable event. We'll go edit triggers. Create new trigger. We'll say unit is destroyed. Uh, this unit is uh, sector control destroyed. So we're going to say Repar uh, Republic of Martha's Vineyard. We're going to go ahead and come down here to land facility. Let's see here. I think it's a type bunker, if I recall correctly. Uh, we don't want that one. Nope. So let's see here. Building surface. Is that going to work for us? Uh, sector control center. I need to go ahead and get sector building underground. Is that going to work for... Ah, there we go. So as long as the target class is a sector control center, this should go ahead and trigger it. I'm not going to do a specific unit at this time. Okay, so now that that's been set up, let's go ahead and kind of close that one. Looks good. We'll add that one in as a trigger. Good. So conditions, um, I always do everybody's favorite. The scenario has started. <laughs> yup. So I'm going to go ahead and press the OK button here and close that one out. We're going to go ahead and add that in. Yup. Add condition. And now under actions, we need to go ahead and create a Lua script. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll do a Lua script. Create new action. Uh, this one calls uh, activate local SAMs because DED. Cool. I like that. That looks pretty good. Press the OK button. Check, 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 check. Looks pretty good. Activate. Okie doke. So what we're going to do too is we're going to go ahead and add a message box in here just so we know that things happened. So we're not just hallucinating here. MSG, uh, da, da, da. let's go ahead and MSG box. Oh, what is the command? MSG box. I want to make sure. Ah, oh, it's send edit MSG box. It's one of those things I almost forgot. So we'll do send edit message box and we'll call it uh, units. So that way we can display the screen unit that died on the screen. So at least we know that that worked okay. So I'm going to go ahead and press the OK key. I'm going to look around, look around. Check, 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 check. Press the OK key. I've done that a million times. I forgot to hit save. Okay, so now we need to blow that thing up. So we'll go ahead and do it with saboteurs initially here to have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause my scenario. Go ahead and grab some saboteurs. Let's go ahead and see what we're going to use for this. I think an M1 Abrams should do the trick here. M1A02. Oh, I can do the SEP. Sweet. Going to do this. Uh, go ahead and blow them to pieces. I don't know if they're going to have enough firepower to do the deed here, but uh, we'll find out pretty quick. All right, there he goes. He's working him over. He's working him over. Let's see here. His uh, health is looking pretty strong, though. Our Abrams is not doing the world's best job here. So uh, I think we're going to have to get a little more technical. This is uh, We need something with a little bit more kick here. So let's see here. I'm going to pop over here. Let's go ahead and say, mm -hmm -hmm. I really like to use a Pershing. Oh, good. I do have Pershings. Uh, do I have the Pershing that I want to use, though? Ah, this will do it. Sweet. 
we're going to go ahead and use this Pershing. Ooh, doesn't want me to put it there. Fine, be that way, jerk. And we'll use this Pershing right here. We'll grab this one. Control shift F9. We're going to go ahead and use nuclear weapons. I hate nuclear weapons. Too bad. We need to do this in a hurry. One, two, three. Fire. <laughs> Probably within minimum range, aren't I? Am I within minimum range? Yes, I am within minimum range. I had a feeling. Let's go put them in uh, Boston. And let's see what we have for range here. Oh, my. That thing is uh, some pretty serious range there. Can we take the shot now? Because our poor little M1 Abrams there is going to be there for like a month. Still within minimum range. What on earth is my range here? Let's go up to Canada real fast. I double check to make sure I've done that correctly. I have. Locked onto this guy real quick. Now, let's see here. Blast them. Then we're going to send some Pershing nuclear missiles. That should uh, end that thing pretty quick there. That's what I get for making my sector control station uh, so conveniently named. All right. Fire. Boop. That should do it. Let me get that Abrams out of the way, because um, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I have a feeling that's going to be fairly effective. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like I'm making a lot. Just imagine like the whistling noises. You always see like in Looney Tunes and stuff like that. All right. For this to work, we should get an angry message box. I believe that blasted it. So um, I did not see a message box up here, which is a pretty bad sign, which also probably tells me the message box probably popped up on the other side. So let's see what happened to everybody. Oh, they did not turn on their SAM. They did not turn on their radar. Nothing got activated. Let's do some checking of my code real quick. All right, I think I figured it out. <laughs> so what I forgot is that the unit X is actually basically a fake raptor, or that is a raptor, wrapper that has quite a bit of actual real detail in it that I probably could have extracted a little more intelligently. So um, I'm going to do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crank this up a little bit so you all can see. So now that we have the unit that blew up, we now want to go uh, local attitude equals unit dot latitude and we want to say local longitude equals unit dot longitude remember i was saying earlier how you're referencing an object that doesn't actually exist so the nice things about this is we can now come down here for a tool dot range and we can replace this entire thing with a table we can say latitude equals latitude and we can say longitude equals longitude because remember we're comparing that to the latitude and longitude of where the actual object was so uh, we got to kind of keep that in the back of our head uh, the other thing i've delete all this stuff here because uh, that's not longer going to work. So now we've extracted the latitude and longitude and we've extracted the name. Uh, this should be slightly more polite to us now. now. I'm just going through my notes again real quick just to make sure I haven't made any too many goofies there, but I think I've actually got this pretty close. Control A, Control C. We had a little boo-boo earlier with the message box as well. So I'm going to go ahead and press the OK button. Let's go ahead and take a look at our event again one more time just to make sure there's not doing anything too silly. Let's see here. Sector damage looks good. And we'll go ahead and remove that. We'll add in uh, sector control destroyed. Press OK. Go ahead and close that sucker, press file save. We're going to go ahead and make this a lot less dramatic than we did the last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my uh, weapons uh, damage control, actually. I'll go ahead and set the damage to 99.9. We'll go ahead and set this thing on fire. So theoretically, it should burn itself out. Let's see what happens. Poof, it's gone. All right, did it work? Let's find out. No, it did not work. So if we actually take a look, we can see that all these SAMs that were triggered clearly did not get triggered. So uh, something went wrong again. So let's go ahead and open that sucker up and let's go double check to see what we've done. So um, I believe that should have worked, but again, I'm notorious. And one of the problems is you get no warnings in this program. It just sort of works exactly the way you see it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and grab my sector control station. I'm going to go ahead and load up my load of script cancel. Control A. Uh, let's see here. Um, da, 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 da. It looks like I've, you can see I've, I've been playing around with this a little bit, trying to discover what the mystery mystery here is. Um, my latitude is good. Latitude is good. Longitude, longitude unit, ROMV. I've selected it. Let's see if the logic works on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and press the run key. Theoretically, if the logic worked on its own, I should be able to click this guy and his radar should be turned on, which it is, which means this side of the code is perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. Let's go ahead and I'll reload the scenario real fast because I've done all my damage already. Let's go back over to the event editor actions. We'll do edit. Go ahead and grab all of this stuff. Paste. And we'll go ahead and stick that in there. If I'm not mistaken, it is literally identical. Maybe there was a little teeny tiny something in here that I'm missing, but that should work. Unit.guid should be... Ah, I see my mistake. This shouldn't be unit.guid. This should be v.guid. Because unit.goi doesn't exist anymore. Ah, oh, what a newbie mistake. What a newbie, newbie, newbie mistake. At least you're aware of it. Okay, so now let's test this out. So the radars are all shut off. Well, let's go ahead and set this guy on fire again. Let's go ahead and check my event editor to make sure everything is uh, set correctly first, though. Uh, unit is destroyed. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Uh, sector control station. Let's go ahead and set this thing on fire. I know it's less dramatic than a Pershing, but oh well. 
do 99.9. We'll go ahead and set this to configuration. Go ahead and press space. I'm just going to watch our sector control station. And it burned up. Okay, let's see if it worked. Ha ha, it worked. So there you have it. You have a system now where when the sector control station gets destroyed, it automatically turns on the radar of all of its buddy SAMs in the local environment. So what I'll do real quick is I'll step through all the pieces we need to get to get that to go. First thing is I have my little sector control destroyed. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Now you can see me trying to figure this one out a little bit earlier. Set edit selected. So you can see exactly how I did this. Obviously this one had a bunker in it previously, but it's blown up, so you don't have to worry about that. Under my conditions, uh, yup, <laughs> as the scenario started. And then under my script itself, I'll do edit actions. We'll do edit selected. I'll go ahead and make that nice and big so folks can see it. Drag one of these down. Oh my gosh, what's the point of dragging the thing down if you can't actually change the size of it? So here's what we did. We grabbed the unit that blew up. We have its position. Then we say, was that unit's name including the word control? If it was, we get all the units on that side. And then we surf through each unit to see if it has the word SAM. If it does, we measure the distance between where the unit got blown up. And we also go ahead and compare it to the position of that thing that had the word SAM in it. If that distance is less than 20 nautical miles, then we automatically set that unit on. Nice. So hopefully this video is helpful. Now you can see part of the debugging process of trying to get that sucker to work. But we can see that it actually works pretty well once you make sure you put in the right commands. And again, this is a super useful like mini IAD script. In the future, what it'll probably do is expand it a little more so that what will happen is the uh, radar is basically, if the radar gets killed, it turns everybody else on as well. But that is for another day. Enjoy.